Welcome to Muslim Apologetics Australia. In this video, we're going to address Dr. James White in his response to the Muslims who bring up the quote where Jesus was hanging on the cross and he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Muslims generally make two points out of this. If Jesus is God, why is he crying out to himself? If he's a trinity, if he's a if he's three persons in the one Godhead, and yet he's crying out to another God when he's saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It shows that Jesus didn't believe that he had the Trinitarian spirit within him. Otherwise, why would he say that? So that's argument number one. The second argument is, if Jesus was willing to die on the cross, why is he saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As Dr. James White would say, you know, Jesus was willing, you know, and of course, uh, Shabir Ali has also brought this point up against Dr. James White. I've seen him in previous debates how, you know, if Jesus was willing, why in one version of the Bible, say, I think it's in Matthew's, uh, book where he, you know, he he's not really willing to die on the crucifix to go ahead with it. Basically, you, you hear Jesus say things like, "Oh Father, you know, pass this cup from me." I think it's in the book of Luke or in the book of Matthew. He says, "Father, pass this cup uh, from me, not my will, but your will." He cries, uh, and then we hear. In the version of John's, which is a, a later gospel, uh, we hear how Jesus uh, is now willing. You know, you can see how an evolution is occurring. Okay, well, actually, um, it was in the book of Luke, Luke twenty two forty two. Jesus prays to the Father to remove the cup, uh, but then the same events, which he, which comes in the Gospel of John, which comes later. In John 6, 3, 8, Jesus confidently comes out to do the will of the Father. So what we see, an improvement made. You know, the gospel writers at the start, they didn't like that Jesus was, you know, condemning the crucifixion, trying to move away from the crucifixion. And then what we see is that doesn't look good in Christian theology because Christian theology is trying to teach that, no, from the very beginning, Jesus came, it was his duty he was sent by the Father as the second person in the Trinity, uh, Trinity doctrine, where he was supposed to do the will of the Father. But then we have this human figure, Jesus, who is a son, who is sort of condemning his Father, saying, you know, remove this cup from me. So then we have the Gospel writers trying to fix this problem. They come in a later Gospel, and then they try and say, no, Jesus was willing. But then it looks even worse when Jesus is saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? If Jesus knew that he was going to do his duty, and apparently in the Gospel of John, how it, it all suddenly became corrected, where he wanted to now go and get himself crucified. And he was willing to participate in the crucifixion now. Uh, funny enough, he was dragged. <laughs> he was forced to the crucifixion <laughs> you know if jesus was willing he would have said to the romans hey guys look you know i'll just come in and do it for you this my father sent me no hustle and bustle no all this commotion and entertainment put away the whips okay look i'll, I'll actually get my own disciples to whip me right we'll go through the whole torture you know how the shia do it in uh in um in Iran, how they whip themselves because they want to feel what Ali felt, you know. So, you know, the disciples could have done that commotion with Jesus and said, look, you know, you don't have to go through all this. this we don't need to go through court processes. The Father sent me. I came to kill myself on the cross. No problem. But, of course, we don't see that. We see Jesus being forced to the cross. And anyway, so when he gets to the cross, he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Here, it's a clear contradiction, even when John tried to correct this notion to say he was willing, even Jesus here is condemning this and saying, why have you left me here? Why have you forsaken me? This wasn't supposed to happen. You, you know, you're, it's basically like saying you're supposed to rescue me. So what do the deceitful Christians do now? They then run to the Old Testament 
So bring a quotation and let's see what Dr. James says here. Now, Dr. James in this video responds. He will say how Jesus was just quoting the Old Testament and Jesus was basically quoting a prophecy to be fulfilled. Let's have a listen. Box on you for a moment. Can I talk to you about the words from the cross? I'll be honest with you. I love when my Muslim friends raise this issue. I really do. I have explained this to audiences in Dublin and Sydney, Australia, and all over Europe, and now here in South Africa. And I love getting the chance to do this. So thank you for raising this issue. Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. Jesus cried those words from the cross. Was he talking to himself? No. Anyone, when, when, when Mr. Kareem says, well, he's speaking to himself. Why have you abandoned, why have I abandoned myself? That's, again, that's not what Christians believe. We don't believe that Jesus is the Father. He's speaking to the Father. He was sent by the Father. Three persons, one God. All of them described as Yahweh. One being of God. Our God's big enough to do that. So, but here's the question. What was Jesus saying? Have you ever looked it up? Have you ever looked it up? Jesus is quoting a psalm. Did you know that? Yeah, he's called Psalm 22. The 22nd Psalm. And in Psalm 22, it starts off, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. If you read the rest of Psalm 22, it's a messianic psalm. It's all about the crucifixion of Jesus. It talks about being pierced and, and everything that would happen to a person who's being crucified. It's a prophetic picture of what happened on the cross, which according to Surah 4, 1 to 7, never happened. At least not to Jesus. But it ends with the justification of the suffering servant. He's justified by God. So why does Jesus say it? He's not saying that God has abandoned him. When you start off with the first words of a famous hymn of your people, you're expecting your people to finish it out. We have a hymn called Amazing Grace. All I have to say to my people is Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. And I don't even have to finish it because they know all the rest of the song. And Psalm 22 is one of the songs of the people of Israel. And when Jesus said that, he was starting that song and he was saying, this is being fulfilled now before your eyes. The Messiah. Okay, let's stop it there. First of all, nowhere did that, does that particular verse say, this is now being fulfilled in front of you. He didn't say, nowhere in the book of Psalms is it saying that this is being fulfilled in front of you. And Jesus didn't even say that on the cross. He didn't say to the crowds, look, this is all being fulfilled in front of you. This is only his interjection. To claim that this is a prophecy being fulfilled. But we're going to go to Psalms and analyze it. And it doesn't speak even about the prophecy of him being killed, being fulfilled. In even that passage. He has come. He's given his life. And he will be justified. He will be vindicated when he rises from the dead. That's what it's about. Look more closely. Look more deeply. Okay, so let's go and look more deeply and look more closely. So folks, let's open up Psalms 22 verses 1. And let me point out, because Jesus quoted Psalms 22 1, and he used the word, the same words, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And apparently Jesus was just repeating this. This doesn't prove that Jesus was fulfilling his crucifixion. No, it actually proves that he was condemning his crucifixion. And that's why it was even prophesied in Psalms 22.1. <laughs> you see? So notice how the Christian tries to be the trickster to say, Oh, he was just quoting the Old Testament. Well, the Old Testament proves that he was condemning the crucifixion and only that prophecy was being fulfilled. And it even gets more clearer. Have a look. Let's read Psalms 22.1. It says, we'll start from, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. So 
if this is Jesus, why and he's quoting Psalms 22, 1, why is he now asking to be saved? If Jesus was willing to die on the cross, and you want us to believe that Jesus was just prophesizing Psalms 22, 1, well, why is he asking God to save him? Let's read the next verse. My God, he says, I cry out by day. By you do not answer by night, but I find no rest. Yet you enthroned as the Holy One, you are one Israel praises. This is verse 22.3. Let's go next. Let's read the whole context, what Christians don't do. Psalms 22.4. In you our ancestors put their trust, they trusted, and you delivered them. Hmm. So did the Father deliver Jesus? Psalms 22.5 To you they cried and out and were saved. Hmm. Last time I checked, Jesus wasn't saved from the cross. He apparently got killed. He was buried for three days, wasn't he? He knew they trusted and were not put to shame. They weren't put to shame. But the whole Jews and the Romans, their objective was to put him to shame by getting him killed. See, it becomes worse when these one guys want to quote Psalms to prove that Jesus was just, you know, narrating the Old Testament, prophesizing the Old Testament. Let's go to verse 6. But I am worn and not a man scorned by every despised by the people. Verse 7. Al who seek me mock me, they hurl insults shaking their heads. Let's continue. Verse 8. He trusts in the Lord, they say, let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. Was Jesus rescued from the cross? No. And there's no point in a Christian apologist saying, oh, well, after three days, Jesus rise, that therefore God rescued him. No, Jesus was pleading on the cross for being rescued. He wasn't waiting to be buried three days and, and then crying from the tomb to be rescued. He was calling from the cross to be rescued. He, the living body was calling to be rescued. 22.9 Yet you brought me out of my womb and made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. Verse 9. From birth I was cast in you, from the mother's womb you have been my God. Verse 11. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help me. Well, if Jesus was quoting the Psalms, well, he's now saying there's no one to help me. I need so he's basically saying I need someone to help me. So why aren't we quoting the whole verse in context? Look at this, Psalms 22, we'll go to now verse 19. It says, But your Lord, do not be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Come quickly to help me. Not after three days. <laughs> Jesus is saying, Come quickly to help me from the cross. See, this actually proves the Islamic position. <laughs> Right, where Allah rescued Jesus. But here, Christians are telling us, oh no, Jesus wasn't answered. So what, come quickly to help me means come three days later after the, I've already been killed, buried, put in the tomb. Come on now. It says, deliver me from the sword, my precious life, from the power of the dogs. Verse 20. Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. 22.21. How How is leaving Jesus dead on the cross and then buried in a tomb, how is that showing that he was rescued from the mouth of the lions? <laughs> he wasn't rescued. The lions basically killed him on the cross. So what we've seen, folks, is that when the Christians are quoting the Psalms, the Old Testament, to prove that Jesus was just fulfilling a prophecy, well, the prophecy that was being fulfilled and we, go, we went through the whole context. It says that, the, that Jesus would be calling out and demanding the Father to rescue him, right? So when you want to go back to the Psalms to say he was just praising, it was just a prophecy showing he, it was being fulfilled in the mouth of Jesus on the cross, 
It helps you not, in fact, works 100% against you. All it does is prove that Jesus wanted to be rescued from the beginning and he wanted to be saved. He did not want to get killed on the cross. And the prophecy that he was quoting actually proves that point. So no, 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 James White does not help you to twist around and run to the Old Testament to claim that Jesus was fulfilling a prophecy about wanting to be crucified. I'm sorry, doesn't work that way. It actually works against you. Goodbye.